You like the new background? Yeah. Like the suit? It was real cheap. Watch the 2000 movie on Netflix instead. Charlie's Angels with Farrah Fawcett Majors was way better, and they had new episodes every week. I like the brunette the most. I can't remember her name, but she sure was gorgeous. I will never forget old what's her name. Stellar. 8 out of 10. Don't listen to the sad white men on here. You're not helping. You're not helping. 2 out of 10. I had to go see it. To see if it was really as bad as the reviews said it was. I wish I had just believed them, because at my age I can't afford to waste time on junk like this. Apparently you can. Apparently you can. Because you thought the movie would be terrible. You heard the movie was terrible, and you still went to see it. You absolutely can spend your time on junk like this. Why'd you go to see it? I t can't waste my time. Can't waste my time. Loud with lots of high-pitched screaming. Now I actually want to see it. This is a complaint I love. I love this. Stop remaking movies. Yeah, actually stop remaking movies. But come up with original ideas. Quit casting women in male roles just because they are women. This, a review for Charlie's Angels. Charlie's Angels, which a lot of people don't remember, was originally an all-male cast and has now been ruined by a feminist agenda to make all of the cast members female. How dare they? They called it the A-Team at the time. A lot of people don't remember that. 10 out of 10, good enough. User reviews need to be better. <laughs> That's the best thing I can say about this. So I was uh, going through IMDb recently, which you probably got from this little intro part, and uh, I was looking at some of the new movies in, and uh, I noticed that the review rating for the new Charlie's Angels film was really low. Uh, it's currently standing at a 4.0 out of 10 when I record this, and I thought, huh, that's odd, because it looked like there were some other films that were in theaters that didn't look particularly good either, maybe just kind of bland, and they weren't rated nearly as low, and I thought that that was kind of strange, right? Uh, because, look, the fact of the matter is, and I want to make this very clear before I continue, I have not seen Charlie's Angels, nor have I seen any of the Charlie's Angels things. I have not seen the movies, I have not seen the television show, nor do I have any real interest to, and it has nothing to do with, I think, that it's a feminist agenda or anything like that. It's just literally, I understood what the concept was, and I didn't really care, so I went and watched other things that I thought I would care about more. That's pretty much it. I have no strong feelings about the series one way or another. I just, it just didn't really appeal to me. Anyway, I uh, went on to actually look at some of the user reviews because that's what it's all based on. And I started to realize that there was a really big problem here. And a problem that I've seen with other user reviews uh, for other movies. And honestly, it's just something that I would have really preferred to address at a certain point, which is... Most of user reviews are not really so much about the movie, but about people's personal stees. It's their, like, personal issues, and they put it onto a movie review. So a lot of this is just not about the movie at all. It has to do with people's impressions and problems in the world around them. And that's problematic for a few reasons. One of the big ones is, is that a lot of people don't seem to understand this. If you're writing a user review, you should be writing a user review to explain to other people why they may or may not like a movie. Like, you know, the plot felt contrived and all the things. Well, okay, those are problems that you can address. I didn't like the acting, I didn't like the action, all of those things. Well, those are problems with the movie, I can understand that. Uh, but then you have people who just get on a high horse and decide that they need to make this all about the problems that this film shows about everything else. And I needed to address it because I don't find it very helpful to determine if I should go and see a movie, and so that's why I'm not reviewing a movie that I have not seen. Also, if you're reviewing a movie that you have not seen, you suck. Like, for instance, 1 out of 10, when you can't make it through the trailer, another Get Woke, Go Broke movie, my new favorite phrase, to add to the long list of PC trash Hollywood is now consistently pushing. To all the non-PC reviewers, thanks for the heads up, you saved me money yet again. Which means, he reviewed the movie without seeing the movie. If you don't want to see the movie, you don't have to see the movie. Don't review it, though. Hey, look, 
that movie I thought was gonna suck apparently sucked, so I'm gonna tell other people that it sucked by reviewing something I didn't see. Don't go reviewing movies you haven't seen. I'm reviewing reviews. Two out of ten. Didn't know this was an agenda movie. There's an agenda franchise? This is my favorite part of this review, though. Don't even come to me to say that I'm a man and don't like females in action roles. Some of my favorite action movies are from women, like Tomb Raider and La Femme Nikita. You can tell how much you love them. You bothered to spell check that. Good for you. Here's, here's another one of those uh, Woke and Broke uh, reviews. Apart from its woeful content, the movie is poorly written, shot, and acted. Okay. Those are legitimate problems with the movie. If you think that it was poorly written, shot, and acted, okay, those are those are legitimate things that you can complain about for a movie, all right? So, good so far. So far, we've had a number of great franchises completely gutted by lefty politics. Okay, you see where we went a, we, we went a hard turn there? Because now we're not talking about the movie at all. Ghostbusters, Men in Black, Terminator, Star Wars, and I seriously hope the new woke James Bond crashes and burns. Okay, so you kind of tipped your hand there because you already hope that a movie that hasn't even come out fails. Uh, but also, I think we have to talk about this for a second. Okay, get woke, go broke. That's not real. And I'm going to explain to you why. I, I know a lot of people are like, no, Nathan. These movies fail. Let's be honest, Charlie's Angels did not do well. Okay, Charlie's Angels, the new iteration of Charlie's Angels, did not do well. Uh, and as far as I can tell, like the new Terminator, Dark Fate, didn't do particularly well either. And so there's a lot of people who have their own agenda, which again, I find very odd because people are complaining that these are agenda movies and then they kind of put their own agenda on the movies. When they talk about, like, other things that were gutted, apparently, by politics, they mention things like Star Wars. Yeah, Star Wars really sucked at the box office, right? It did so badly. They've done so badly with those movies. It, it's just the weirdest thing, those weird flexes, like, hey, yeah, look at how it ruined everything. People have said that about so many things, too. It's like, oh, they're over-politicizing and they're making message movies now. Well, yeah, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But I don't think it has as much to do with how woke a movie is, and it has more to do with how much demand there is from an audience. You have to think about it. Okay, well, a new Marvel movie, right? Okay, people might want to see that because it's Marvel. It's a comic book hero movie. Maybe they want to see that. Oh, it has a message in it? All right, that's fine. I want to go see a superhero movie. I want to go see a new Star Wars movie. Of course, everyone wants to go see a new Star Wars movie. Oh, there's messaging in it? All right, you're going to go along with it because, hey, it's Star Wars. Of course. Think about this for a second. How many people were really, like, chomping at the bit for a new Charlie's Angels film? Does anyone really remember, like, the 2000 and 2004? Like, by some of the reviews that I've seen, the 2000 movie was, like, cinema masterpiece <laughs> when they're talking about this film. But does anyone really remember it very well? Like, you remember the cast. But they got three hot women to, you know, be in an action film. Like the original series. You got three hot women to be in an action film. What did they do now? Well, they got they got a few hot women and Kristen Stewart to be in an action film. I don't really see what the problem is here. Naomi Scott's in it, right? So can't be all that bad. And that other one is tall. There's not a lot of people that are like, oh man, I've been waiting for a Charlie Angels movie for 15 years. Okay, you know, before we move on, I think I should clarify that the problem with this Get Woke, Go Broke dialogue is that it suggests that a movie's level of messaging is the main factor in whether it succeeds or fails. However, that simply does not hold true when you look past an individual film, which the Woke and Broke crew obviously want to do. So fine, here we go. By this assertion, a film targeting a male audience with manly protagonists from an established property should be busting the box office no problem. However, that is not always the case, even in 2019, as only one of of these four movies have even recouped its budget. Even the one that did, Rambo Last Blood, fell way short of every other Rambo movie at the box office, only making its money back due to a relatively small budget. Even with star power, name recognition, and, for some of them, a positive response, the demand for such a film may not be there, even if it is decidedly not woke. God, I hate that term. Anyway, back to me ranting way longer than I ever planned. Sometimes reboots just aren't going to work regardless of what you do. 
Like here, elevator pitch for everybody. Okay, come on, gather around, kids. I'm going to pitch my new reboot. All right, we're going to get the nostalgia in there. Everyone's going to absolutely love this. It's going to be a dark, gritty reboot, too. We're going to do it. Everybody ready for it? Elf. That's right. We're bringing back Elf. He's hiding out from the police because he shot a cat in Reno just to watch it die. That's right. New Elf movie, everybody. Billion dollars in our pocket. No, I mean, besides me, no one's going to go watch that film. Actually, maybe they would. I don't know. Anyone really clamoring for more Elf in their life? Let me know in the comments down below. Oh dear God, no, the prophecy has come true. Here's another one of those go woke, go broke uh, ones that I want to go into a little bit more detail on. Uh, one out of ten. I really wish this movie, which was a great concept when it was originally made, hadn't become so politically correct. The box office is a reflection of how these SJW PC films just can't reach an audience. Yeah, like Star Wars. The worst part is now Charlie is a woman, even though it was a man originally. You really cared uh, deeply about the voice on the other side of an intercom, didn't you? You realize that Charlie is a gender-neutral name, and it is possible that that voice was being disguised. Did they ever actually specifically mention that Charlie was a man in the original series? Did they ever do that? I don't know, because I didn't see it, but tell me in the comments down below. And if there's a specific episode that I can watch, because uh, I'm, I'm not going through the whole series to find out, sorry. Imagine they remade Star Wars and made Luke Skywalker a woman. Yeah, they'd never do that. No one would remake The Cosby Show with an Asian family. Hmm. Okay. Um, well, no one would remake The Cosby Show for a lot of other really pertinent reasons than that. But if your comment is they would never make, like, a family comedy kind of thing with an Asian family, I think they did do that. Uh, but I'm, I'm pretty sure, no, they wouldn't be doing it with anything associated with Cosby. Pretty sure. At least I had free tickets and had time to give up and sneak into Joker again. Oh, God, that's a whole other thing. It sure is fun watching all these PC movies fail and lose millions of dollars each though again you're putting a lot of yourself in this that has nothing to do with the movie and yeah every movie that people consider pc or that's trying to do messaging or has a social justice warrior vibe has lost so much money so very much money but it's it's good it's good that you went and saw joker a movie that has absolutely nothing socially relevant in it. Good for you. Another one about all women movies being rushed to the public. Again, we're talking about Charlie's Angels. One out of ten walked out. It's now official. Holly Weird has run completely out of ideas. Again, really putting your own thing on there. Oh, and I thought the angels were supposed to be goodly, looking good. You know, like the ladies from the 70s TV show. Well, now I know you're wrong because Naomi Scott's in it, so... One out of ten. Go woke, go bro. Boy, people are really pushing that, aren't they? Trailers looked terrible. You didn't see it. Wokeness kills. That's why Terminator Dark Fate tanked. Star will Wars will too. Yeah, I'm sure Star Wars will make no money. That just makes perfect sense. Star, Star Wars is going to absolutely tank at the box office. You, you really live in your own little world, don't you? 10 out of 10. Men aren't used to movies that don't center on them. Again, boy, people really want to put their own thing on a movie. And to be honest with you, I don't really understand why a Charlie's Angels reboot demands everybody like put so much of themselves on this. It could just be an okay movie, and that's why it's not doing particularly well. I don't know why I'm the person who's like, I have to rush to the aid of Charlie's Angels, but I just feel like there are criticisms you can make about a movie if a movie's not good, but there's also criticisms you make that have nothing to do with the movie. And when you get into that kind of territory, it's just not useful to anyone at all. One out of ten. I hate watching female-led films. I prefer patriarchal films like Captain Marvel and Wonder Woman. Okay. For the record, I didn't really mind Captain Marvel. Like, it wasn't the best Marvel film I've ever seen, but it, it also really wasn't nearly as bad as a lot of people would make it out to be. And Wonder Woman was darn good. 
Like Wonder Woman was damn good to the third act. But it was it was really good up until then. 10 out of 10. Fun. Maybe not 10 stars, but definitely doesn't deserve all your fun stars. So why'd you rate it 10 stars? I know, it's to counteract the other star, but but that just fuels the fire, folks. You give it a 10 or you give it a 1 because you want to counteract good scores or bad scores. It doesn't help anybody. Nobody gets an accurate portrayal of what a movie is. Okay, so here's another common complaint. 1 out of 10. Nope. Okay. Dear Holly Woke, again, tipped your hand way early here. A 120-pound woman cannot beat the crap out of a 220-pound, heavily muscled, well-trained man, let alone two at the same time. They were really descriptive about those guys, weren't they? Heavily muscled, well-trained. No matter how much karate she knows, how about your industry go back to making movies instead of propaganda pieces? Just an idea! So, some stuff on that. Uh, one, actually... Hollywood's been making propaganda pieces basically since since the dawn of time. Um, and they've sometimes done it for the U.S. government and sometimes for or different organizations. That's actually not new. You think it's new, but it's not new. Again, this is not new. It's a problem that I constantly have when people are like, well, you know, these movies today are all about messaging. It's like, yeah, they were before. Yet you're just noticing it more now. The new Star Wars movies are not suddenly ruined by social justice warriors. Like, the themes in them are the same basic themes the original movies had. Oh, a ragtag group of diverse heroes are going after an authoritarian regime. Wow. Never seen that before in Star Wars. It's me and I'm interested in. You did something very interesting with Star Wars, if you think about it. The good guys are the rebels. They're using asymmetric warfare against a highly organized empire. I think we call those guys terrorists. When I did it, they were Viet Cong. Exactly. So were you thinking of that at the yes. time? The irony of that one is in, in both of those, the little, the little guys won. Right. And the big, highly technical em the, empire. The English empire. Right? English the English empire, empire, the American empire, yeah. lost. Yeah. That was the whole point. You have a great line which is, th so this is how liberty dies. To We're in the middle of it right now. To thunderous applause. Exactly. It's the po it's, you were, it was a condemnation of populism in a science fiction context. That's a theme that runs all the way through Star Wars. Yeah. I think science fiction... All right, so here's the problem with the criticism. 120-pound woman cannot beat the crap out of two very heavily muscled 220-pound men. Yeah, that does seem like it would be unrealistic, uh, but it's an action film, folks. That's the thing you think is the most unrealistic part of this action film? Let me tell you a little bit about some action film stuff that's happening right now. Uh, let's go to the Terminator thing. People are like, oh man, these, these ladies are too small to be beating up these, you know, giant guys. These, these oh, heavily muscled, well-trained men. Uh, yeah, you know what else is unrealistic about the Terminator franchise? Killer robots that come back from the future. So there's that. That's also unrealistic. But I know what you're saying. Nathan, it's Charlie's Angels. It's not a science fiction film. Yeah, but it is still an action film. Here's a couple other things that happen in action films. John Wick has a bulletproof tuxedo. Rocky doesn't have internal brain damage. John McClane is still alive after five Die Hard movies. In Fast and Furious, they drove a car out of the window of one skyscraper into the window of another skyscraper. I didn't hear many people complaining about those things. But, oh, she's too small to beat up a dude. There's where the fourth wall breaks for ya, huh? That's the tipping point. That's the straw that breaks the camel's back. If you fall off of a highway section 20 feet down, like onto a car, you don't pop back up and go shoot the bad guys. In reality, if you're thinking that that's not realistic and you're looking for realism in your action films, notice nobody really complained about that. Action films are supposed to be unrealistic by nature. That's why people go to watch them. If they were realistic by nature, go watch a documentary. Or watch a drama. You can go and watch it, yeah, Dunkirk. There you go. You're going to have as much fun watching that as, as you do watching the new Rambo film. 
Like, that's the question I have. It feels like that's a lot of a you thing, and again, not really so much about the film. And if the problem for, uh, like, people who didn't like the movie is that, well, they don't seem like they could handle themselves in a fight, all right, I can recast this for you right now. The Charlie's Angels for the next movie are Gina Carano, Ronda Rousey, and the ma'am. There you go. Boom. You wouldn't mess with them, would you? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Hey, there, that solves your problem. You feel better now? No, of course you don't. You're going to complain about that too. Okay, so obviously a lot of people wanted to make these criticisms about how, well, the new Charlie's Angels doesn't really work in the spirit of previous Charlie's Angels. And so I thought we would do something kind of fun. I'm going to kind of compare some plot synopsis. All right, so this is from the new movie. When a young systems engineer blows the whistle on a dangerous technology, Charlie's Angels are called into action putting their lives on the line to protect us all. Let's go back to the 2000 film. Three women, detectives with a mysterious boss, retrieve stolen voice ID software using martial arts, tech skills, and sex appeal. Okay. Full throttle. The angels investigate a series of murders which occur after the theft of a witness protection profile database. So there's that. And just for compare and contrast, I'm going to go back to the original series, and I'm going to pick an episode at random. Here's the plot synopsis for Season 3, Episode 3 of the original Charlie's Angels television series. A man learns that a woman he knew years ago died in an accident. He also learns that she has a son, whom he believes could be his. So he hires the girls to find out. Kelly finds him and gets close to him and is waiting for the right time to tell him because he's fragile. Sabrina learns that his mother is the daughter of a criminal and that the people who are now in charge of his business are wary that her son might come and take over. At the same time, someone is trying to keep them from finding out the truth. Yeah, you're right. Uh, the new movie has a convoluted plot line. It's not at all due to the fact that that's kind of a conceit of the entire series. Now, here's an interesting bit of trivia that just happens to be from this episode. And I swear, I literally did think to myself, I guess three's a lucky number for me. It's season three, episode three. I, I did not plan this. But here's an interesting piece of trivia from this particular episode. Cheryl Ladd said executive producer Aaron Spelling loved her tummy and put her in bikinis a lot more than the other characters. In this episode, Ladd rebelled by wearing an especially tiny bikini, not approved for TV. The director objected, and she replied, well, Aaron wants me in a bikini, so this is what he's going to get. We're running late, and we gotta shoot the scene. Let's go. I'm not changing. That almost sounds like, you know, feminism and uh, rebelling against a patriarchy. I should really put Get Woke, Go Broke on the original Charlie's Angels. I guess that that's par for course now. Here's our user review for the original Charlie's Angels TV series. See if you spot any similarities or contrast. Influential in its own way. When this show first came on, it was dismissed as nothing more than a jiggle show. However, this was one of the first shows that showed that women could go out and get the bad guys just like the boys could. So hey, there you go, folks. Um, a, a television series that people admired for seeing women be able to go out and get the bad guys has now been ruined because now there are women going out and get getting the bad guys. One out of ten. Annoying music video. Girl power? Don't make me laugh or cry. I totally agree with most negative reviews on this one. Not much to add except this. Any woman who is interested in strong female characters and real girl power should avoid this film at any cost as it will only insult her intelligence. Oh, sorry, that's our user review for the 2000 film. Oh, okay. A lot of times when people give 10 out of 10s, 1 out of 10s, whatever, they're trying to impose something that has nothing to do with the film at all. And it's really annoying, because, like, once upon a time, I used to try to do game reviews, and no one cared. But the thing about it is that I really took that seriously. Like, I want to give an honest, earnest impression of what I think of a thing. And if I were to give an honest, earnest impression of the reviews that I've seen for Charlie's Angels, I would, like, give it a zero out of ten, because hyperbole is apparently par for course now. And honestly, if you think a movie is, like, an assault on your personal belief system, I have to ask how strong that belief system is.
But hey, it's nice that there's so many people out there who, you know, feel like woke movies don't make money. By the way, Frozen 2 is coming out soon, and I'm sure it's going to fail utterly because there was, you know, messaging in the previous one. They don't give Elsa a girlfriend yet, from what I've heard. Probably because they actually want to sell this in China. But it definitely feels like it's going to be a thing one day, and I'm sure that's not going to make a billion dollars when it releases. Keep living in that dream world. What's the upshot? Basically, uh, if you're going to do user reviews, or if you're going to look at user reviews, just try to look at them a little bit more fairly. Don't just go for all of the 1 out of 10s, 10 out of 10s, and say, oh, well, the movie must be great, or the movie must be horrible. Start looking at the ones in the middle. I think you're going to find that those are much more nuanced, and more interesting reviews, more interesting takes that have a lot more to do with the actual film, and not people's personal stuff that they put on top of it. And I really wished that more people would do that. Because, honestly, once I make this damn ALF film, I want honest feedback. I want to know if you like my casting of the cat. It's Taylor Swift. She still had the suit from that really creepy-looking Cats film. And we didn't want it to go to waste. So... Name recognition is key. And if you're going to write a user review, you're not writing that for you. You're writing it for others. Do them a solid and be honest and explain what the movie is. In terms of the movie, not everything else you got going on in your life. Thank you for watching this episode with my new backdrop and my new suit that definitely registers on camera. So there's that. Uh, and uh, normally when I say, don't forget to dislike and unsubscribe, I'm usually talking in an ironic fashion, but I think that maybe people will actually take me up on this offer for all the wrong reasons. You know what? Don't care anymore. For, just a side note, could we stop saying woke? It's just a stupid term. And the problem is that now I feel like woke is used far more as a derogatory term than anything else. And that's usually the point where I'm like, yeah, I think we're, we're over and done with that. Because you notice the people that actually say it in all of these reviews are the ones that are using it in a condescending tone. That should be a wake-up call. Woke-up call. Ha, huh. see what I did there? I don't even want to say it. I'm going to end the video by reading a uh, review from the original television series. I just really love this. Soft and classy. I watched the rerun of the show when I was 15, 16, and at the time, I thought it was the best show ever. The girls could, and they did, but they were still girls. They dressed with taste, fell in love, wore bikini, and didn't treat men like dirt. They were tough, but feminine. And the truth be told, I was really blanked off pissed off when they made a remake out of the show charlie's angels movies none of them had that little extra little extra that the show had little extra that the show had the reason i love this one so much is because he saw he saw this when he was 15 or 16 and he thought it was the greatest show ever no kidding the cur the girls could and they did but they were still girls is is great they were tough but feminine yeah by the way that's apparently a woke thing now apparently you shouldn't be tough and feminine because how could farrah fawcett beat up those big guys with guns get woke go broke baby <laughs>
wants to learn the reason for this great change in her husband, decides to follow Mustafa, taking her brother Ramazan with him to help her. Ferdain chases after her husband Mustafa. Mustafa, Ferdain, and Ramazan find themselves in a great adventure with the emergence of all this confusion. Turkey, stop putting your political agendas on your movies!